Hello, I am Dr. Nayan. You are watching Biodesk. Today, in this video, we shall discuss about superclass Tetrapoda. Tetrapoda, the term has been taken from Greek language, in which tetra means four and podos means foot. So, tetrapods are four footed animals. Superclass Tetrapoda is the group of four footed vertebrate animals with a few exceptions such as snakes. It includes amphibians, reptiles, apes and mammals. Tetrapods evolved from a group of animals called Tetrapodomorpha which in turn evolved from ancient sarcopterygians which are also called lobe finned fishes around 390 million years ago in the mid Devonian period. We have to see the general features of tetrapods. These are more developed in comparison to Pisces. Let us see the general characters of superclass tetrapoda. These are mostly terrestrial. However, some are modified secondarily for aquatic life also. In this group, the members may be cold-blooded or warm-blooded. You must remember, cold-blooded animals are also called poikilothermic. They have variable body temperature. However, some other animals are with fixed body temperature and they are called homeothermic. Mammals and birds are warm-blooded, however amphibians and reptiles are cold-blooded. The body shape in tetrapods is not definite. As we have seen in fishes, the body shape is usually streamlined. Here body shape not definite, neck may be present, may be absent. In case of frogs, neck is absent. However, in others, neck seen. The skin is dry or glandular, usually covered with scales, feathers or hairs. Locomotion usually with two pairs of limbs and that's why they are called four-footed, four-limbed animals. Nasal chambers open into the mouth cavity. Nasal chambers the external nostrils. External nostrils lead internally into the buccal cavity and this condition is not found in fishes. So tetrapods are peculiar in this feature. Respiration means the gaseous exchange usually takes place by lungs. However, some larval amphibians or some other amphibians are exceptions. The heart is three or four chambered having two auricles and one or two ventricles. RBCs are nucleated. Now some more features. The external and middle ears are mostly present in tetrapods. Internal ear is present in all, in feces and in tetrapods also. But in tetrapods, external and middle ears are mostly found. The lateral line system is absent. Lateral line system is present in superclass Pisces. Lateral line system contains some sensory organs. And this lateral line system is absent in tetrapods except a few larval amphibians. Members are oviparous or viviparous. Remember, Mammals are viviparous. They produce their babies, giving birth, living ones. However, birds, reptiles and amphibians are oviparous. Fertilization is external or internal. In case of amphibians, fertilization is external. However, in reptiles, birds and mammals, it takes place inside the body of the parents. So internal and development is indirect in case of amphibians. Indirect means it includes 
a free swimming larval stage. So development indirect or direct? Direct in case of reptiles, birds and mammals. Tetrapods have 10 to 12 pairs of cranial nerves. 10 pairs of cranial nerves are found in amphibians, however others are with 12 pairs of cranial nerves. You may think what are cranial nerves? Remember the nerves arising from brain are called cranial nerves. These are paired nerves supplied to different parts of the body. And the common examples of this group are frogs, lizards, snakes, birds and mammals. Remember lizards and snakes are the members of class reptilia, however frogs class amphibia. Superclass tetrapoda has been divided into four major groups. These are called classes. We see class amphibia, class reptilia, class apes and class mammalia. So all tetrapods are usually with paired limbs, four-footed animals but divided into four different classes on the basis of certain differentiating features. Amphibia includes frogs, toads, reptilia includes lizards, snakes, apes includes all different birds and class mammalia includes bat and the man himself. This is all about general characters and classification of superclass tetrapoda. In our next video, we shall see the features of these different groups one by one in detail. So stay tuned for upcoming videos. Thank you.